If you have ever looked at satellite view of Quebec, you have probably noticed this circular feature right here. Often called the Eye of Quebec, this is Lake Manicougan. And as many of you probably know, this is a large meteor impact crater. The impact crater itself is said to be around 100 kilometers, but has since been eroded. And in the center here is Reine Lavasseur Island. And this island is very interesting because it too is very circular. And this central island is actually the second largest island lake in the world. And it is larger than the lake it sits in, which I find very interesting. On the island is the Lewis Babel Ecological Reserve, which has many old growth forests and can be pretty easily visited as long as you have a kayak and a tent to bring with you. Now, this brings us to the topic of our video. This crater is actually only the fifth largest impact crater on Earth. So we are going to be exploring some other impact craters. The next impact crater we are going to be exploring is not larger than this one, but it is very interesting. And it too is in Canada. This is Clearwater East and Clearwater West impact craters. Now these two lakes were assumed to have formed at the same time, and it was assumed that they formed 290 million years ago. However, only Clearwater West formed that long ago. Clearwater East is actually much older and is said to have formed 480 million years ago. Now, as you may have noticed, this island, along with Lake Manicougan, has these central islands here, and you may be wondering how they formed. Well, this is known as a complex crater, and it only happens in some of the largest impact sites on Earth. Basically, when a meteor impacts the Earth, it creates a ton of pressure downwards, which is why the sides of the impact crater go up. But then, once this pressure is relieved due to the meteor stopping, the middle of the ground actually comes up. Now, both of these lakes are actually complex craters, but the reason you can only see the islands in Clearwater West is because Clearwater East is much older and they have eroded. And these lakes are actually part of Tursahook National Park, the largest national park in Quebec, coming in at six and a half million square acres. But that is all for the Clearwater Lakes. Now let's go to the fourth largest impact crater on Earth. This is the Papagai Crater in Russia. And once you know that it is there, it is very hard to not see. The area around it is much greener than the landscape surrounding it. And this crater has been largely eroded. It is assumed to have formed 35 million years ago. Now this impact crater is actually set as a UNESCO Geopark site. And what I find interesting about it is that the meteor that formed this instantly turned the graphite that was found here into diamonds. This caused the site to be off limits until 1997 when a proper investigation was created. Despite the fact that this place is abundant with diamonds, it is thought that hardly any have ever been mined from here. This is because the diamonds found here are way less pure and would be more expensive to mine due to its remote location than diamonds that are produced synthetically or mined elsewhere. Now, if you wanna go here and try to strike it rich, good luck. You see, this settlement of Papagai up here only has 300 people and no airport. So the nearest settlement to here is Saskalak, and it is 70 miles away. And so you'd have to basically travel 70 miles through uncharted terrain just to mine for pretty bad diamonds. Now let's move on to the third largest impact site on Earth. And this takes us back to Canada. This is the Sudbury impact site. And it's not that noticeable if you look at it from here, although you can probably see it. However, it becomes a lot more obvious if we go into terrain mode. As you can see, the crater created by the impact is a lot less elevation than the surrounding area. Now this crater is estimated to be around 130 kilometers in diameter and also said to have formed around 1.8 billion years ago. This is why it seems a lot less obvious to see because it has been heavily eroded. Now, it is suggested that this portion of the crater is just a smaller portion of the larger crater that has since been eroded. And something that I find extremely interesting about this crater is that ejecta, basically debris from this crater, has been launched over 480 miles from the impact site all the way to Minnesota. It is just crazy to think that the impact was strong enough to send parts of rock over 480 miles. And the impact crater around here actually made this land rich in resources, 
specifically copper and silver, although other minerals are also found around here. As you can probably see on the map, this place has been heavily mined. Up here we have the Coleman Mine, and around Sudbury we have many mines. There's mainly the North and South Mine, and it was this mining that actually made Sudbury into the city it is today. It is actually the largest city in Northern Ontario. But now, let's move on to the second largest impact crater in the world. This is the Chicxulub Crater in the Yucatan Peninsula, and looking at it on a map, you cannot see it at all. But this crater, more than 150 kilometers in diameter, is said to have been the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. Now, I'm not going to spend that much time on it because you cannot see it on satellite view, but I would suggest reading about it. It's actually very interesting. This brings us to the largest impact structure on Earth, and this one is found in South Africa. This is the Vredefort Impact Crater, and it is said to be more than 160 kilometers in diameter. And not only is this the largest impact structure, it is also the second oldest. It is said to have formed more than 2 billion years ago. And so the only section that is left is this arc here. And the asteroid itself that hit this area is assumed to be one of the largest that has ever hit Earth. It is estimated to be around 20 to 25 kilometers in diameter. Now, you may look at this and think, how is this possibly the largest impact crater? And I wouldn't blame you for thinking that. If we measure this, it looks only 40 kilometers in diameter. Well, something that blew my mind is that this isn't the impact crater. This is just the central dome that was created from the complex crater. The actual crater is overlaid here on this map, and it is massive. It looks larger than the country of Lesotho down here. Although this has been so heavily eroded that the only place we can see today is the dome here. Now, this dome here was actually made a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2005 because of its geologic intrigue. But that is all I'm going to be talking about for Impact Craters today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I would love to hear what new video ideas you might have. See you later.